In this video, I'm going to cover the solutions to exam practice session three. So starting with the first question, in this question, we are faced with a game tree that's slightly different than a normal game tree. Um, in this case, we have Pac-Man, which is a maximizer node. However, the ghost nodes make a move that's optimal for Pac-Man one third of the time, meaning they ma maximize Pac-Man's utility one third of the time, and they minimize Pac-Man's utility the other two thirds of the time. So from here, we want to compute the correct utility values for both of the ghosts and for Pac-Man. So let's start with this first ghost over here. This, the, go the utility value of this ghost is going to be um, the probability of each of the possible utilities times the value of that utility. So we're going to get um, one third of the time it's going to maximize Pac-Man's utility, which would result in a utility of six. and two-thirds of the time it's going to minimize Pac-Man's utility, which would result in a utility of negative three. So from here we can calculate the expected utility, which comes out to six times one-third plus negative three times two-thirds, and this comes out to zero. So we can fill out the utility value right here. Now let's compute the utility for the second ghost. In this case, one-third of the time, it will maximize Pac-Man's utility, in which case it would pick the nine, and in two-thirds of the case, it's minimizing Pac-Man's utility, and it would choose the negative three. So here, the utility value is three minus two, which will give us one. So the expected utility value of this node is one. Finally, the utility value of Pac-Man since this is a maximizer node, it's going to be 1, which is the max of 0 and 1. Okay, next we're asked to draw a complete game tree for this game above, and a game tree that only includes max nodes, min nodes, and chance nodes, and doesn't include these nodes that, of the ghosts um, that are neither. So we can start by giving a max node for Pac-Man at, at the root of the tree, and then put in a chance node to show that two-thirds of the time it's going, the ghost is going to minimize it or follow minimizing action and one-third of the time it's going to choose an action or, or go to a node that maximizes Pac-Man's utility. So we'll insert one chance node right here and then have a maximizer node and a minimizer node and note that it's going to go to the maximizing node one-third of the time and the minimizing node two-thirds of the time. And then from here, each of these nodes have the same three options, which is three, negative three, and six. In the same case over here, And then on this side over here, we have another chance node for the other ghost. And then we have two options spanning out. And again, we're going to have one third probability over here and two thirds probability of going to a minimizer node. And the utility values here will be zero negative three and nine and the same three over here. Also note that there's other possible trees. Um, this is just one of the possible solutions to um, that results in an equivalent game tree to the game tree above. Um, and perhaps the most straightforward solution, but there are other solutions and other possible trees um, that could also yield the same exact game above. In this next question, we're looking at alpha beta printing, specifically how um, the ordering in alpha beta printing and the order of nodes that you choose affects the amount that you prune. This question asks um, to determine ordering for which we can maximize the number of leaf nodes that are not visited. Note that 
you wouldn't be able to do this in an arbitrary case where you don't know the utility values and look at advance of the tree, but this is just an exercise in understanding how alpha beta pruning works. So a first good strategy to approach this problem is to determine the utilities of each of these nodes. So these right side up triangles are max nodes, so we know that the utility here is 8, the utility here is 5, the utility here is 7, and the utility here of 2. Similarly, moving up one level, the utility value of this node, which is a minimizer node, is 5, the utility of this node is 2, and at the top, finally, the utility is 5, since this is a maximizer node. Next, we can look at the, a good strategy to do is to look at the actual solution this, this returns. And we see that the maximizer and the actual utility of the root node up here is 5, and that comes from this node right here. So we know that if we um, we know that we're never going to prune this node because it's the actual solution returned at the top. So it's a good strategy to first look um, to first go in the direction of the node that is actually returned. So we can give a ordering first here and here because we know that this node is never going to be pruned, and we can start with that node. Between these two nodes, we know that we're going to have to visit both of them because um, if we visit five, we have we don't have any idea what this was, and it could be higher. And if we visit four first, we're still going to need to visit five because that's the um, the solution returned. So either putting an arrow here or an arrow on this node would um, would not affect the number of leaf nodes that are not visited because we're going to have to visit um, both nodes. So either direction would be okay here. Next, we need to give a direction on between these two because we know that we just visited this path and, and this subtree right here, and we now need to look at this subtree that leads to the 8 on the left. In this case, we know that we can't prune the entire tree and prune both of them because we don't know if one of these might be higher than the 5. However, if we higher or lower than the 5 for this minimizer node. However, we do see that if we look at the 8 first, then the 2 can be pruned because we know the 8 is higher than the 5, and regardless of what this node's value is here, if it's higher than the 8, this minimizer node will still be a 5, and if it's lower than an 8, then the, this maximizer node is going to choose an 8, and this minimizer node's value will still be 5. So we know that if we go to the 8 first, then we can prune this too. Next, let's look at the right part of the subtree. We just explored the left part and pruned one of the four nodes. Um, next, we see that the value of this node is a 2, and that comes from over here. And we, check out, we can see that if we explore this subtree first and see this 2, then we know that this, two, um, this minimizer will be at most 2. It won't give a value that's higher than 2. And since 2 is less than 5, it will then be able to prune this left side of the tree because if this subtree right here returns a value less than 2, then this maximizer node at the top is going to pick 5. And this, if this returns a value greater than 2, then this minimizer node is going to still pick the 2. So therefore, if we go in this direction first and look at both of these nodes, it doesn't matter which of these two we look at first. And then um, once we determine that this node's value is a 2, we don't have to look at, we can prune this entire subtree, which means that neither of these leaf nodes would be visited. And that's the final solution. Next, let's look at question 3. In this question, we have Pac-Man, and he knows that the utility of going left is 12. However, if he goes right, he doesn't know um, what its utility value is, and but he does know that it's either negative 3, negative 9, or 21, and it's equally likely to be any of those three choices. So Pac-Man has three options, to go left, to go right, or to pay a cost of 1 to explore the right subtree, determine the exact utility that it contains, negative 3, negative 9, or 21, and then make a decision whether to go left or right. So we're interested in question A, what is the expected utility for option 3? So in this case, no matter what, we need to pay a cost of negative 1. So the utility of 
option 3 is equal to be negative 1 plus two different cases. The first case is if Pac-Man sees that its value is 21, then it's he should pick 21 because that's greater than 12. So, and that the probability of that happening is one third. So with one third chance, he'll receive a reward of 21. If it's not 21, if it's negative three or negative nine, then the optimal choice is to go and pick the 12. And that'll happen with two thirds chance. So with two thirds chance, we add on a utility of 12. And this will come out to negative one plus seven plus eight. And this will give us 14. Another way to look at this problem is that instead of first having the negative one out here, we could say with one third probability, he'll get 21 minus one. And with two thirds probability, he'll get a reward of 12 minus the cost of one that he paid. And this will give us the same answer. Um, which is 14. Next, let's look at part B. In this case, we want to determine what values of C should Pac-Man choose option 3. And if option 3 is never optimal, regardless of the value of C, then to write none. So in this case, we should compare the expected utilities of the three options. We know that from above, um, from our calculation above, that the expected utility of option 3 is equal to negative um, oops. The expected utility of option three is going to be negative c, which is the cost you pay, plus one third times twenty one, plus two thirds times twelve, which is equal to fifteen minus c. Now we want to compare this to the expected utility of the other options. So first, let's look at option one. Um, the expected utility of option one, we know, can see right away, is 12. And the expected utility of option two is equal to the average of those three numbers because they're equally likely. So one third times negative three plus negative nine plus 21. And this comes out to three. So between option one and option two, we know that it's optimal always to pick option one over option two because 12 is greater than three. So now we want to compare option one and option three and see when is option three going to be optimal. And this is going to be a case when 15 minus C is greater than or equal to 12. And so this comes out to when C is less than or equal to three. And that's our final answer. Note that in the case when equality holds, when C equals three, option three and option one are both gonna yield an expected utility of 12. And in that case, both cases are optimal.